Good morning. My name is Reverend Gilbert Ham Jr. and I'm one of the associate ministers here at Ebenezer Baptist Church. And it's my pleasure to once again welcome you to our online worship experience. I have the honor of sharing the Word of God this morning with you with the title, Calm and in Chaos. With all that's going on, I want to encourage you through the Word that you can find calm. You can be calm and you can find peace in the midst of chaos. But before the Word of God, I want to share with you a song that I uh, wrote and had the privilege of producing with a choir that I've worked with for several years, the Drexel University Gospel Choir, under the leadership of the Reverend Gregory Ross. The name of the song is, I Know a Man from Galilee, and I pray that it bless you. After the choir has sung, then the Word of God. Oh, man. From Galilee.
gonna set you free.
And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Amen. And the Lord bless the reading of his word. Gracious Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to share your word. And we pray, God, that you would be with us. We pray, God, that you will give us clarity of speech and clarity of thought, God, that the word come forth with power. We pray that you will anoint us afresh, God, in the name of Jesus. That as the word go forth, God, that we will be encouraged and strengthened by the word. For we ask this all in the mighty name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Thank God. Amen. I want to come to you today and offer words of comfort and encouragement. You can agree that we are in a climate that is challenging us like never before. Many are scared, worried, discouraged, and looking for whatever can bring them peace and comfort in the middle of this storm. And I'm here to give you great news this morning. The good news is that you can find peace in the midst of chaos. And that's what I want to share with you this morning, that you can find calm in the midst of chaos. Amen. You can find calm or peace in the midst of chaos. Our text is found in two other synoptic gospels, Matthew 8, 23 to 27, and Luke 8, 22 and 25. The gospel according to St. Matthew has Jesus entering the boat first, followed by his disciples, and omits the little ships, as they are mentioned in the gospel according to St. Mark. The gospel according to St. Luke is similar to Matthew mentioning Jesus entering the ship with his disciples, but adds a few more descriptive details to the account. Luke states that Christ fell asleep as they sailed. He also says when they were filled with water and were in jeopardy to really describe the plight of the disciples and to show the situation that they really was in. However, each account comes to the same conclusion and that is that Jesus has power over any storm and he is able to give his followers peace. And I want to raise three points this morning um, to you. First, storms and chaos can come suddenly. Second, storms and chaos reveals our helplessness and faith. And third, storms or chaos reveals the power of God. So storms and chaos can come suddenly. Would you agree with me that storms and chaos can come out of nowhere? I'm sure that we can agree that there have been times in our lives when things have just shown up unannounced and there were no warnings to let us know that they were coming. They are unpredictable and they can challenge even the strongest among us. What they thought should, be the, should have been a smooth trip to the other side was interrupted by a vicious storm. Matthew 8, 24 says, And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Luke 8, 23 says, But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And when we look at the idea from uh, the Greek, the Greek says this, gives us this account, meaning 
of a fury of a hurricane. And so we understand that this just wasn't any type of storm, but the, uh, the waves came and they beat against the ship and they came and it tossed the ship. This is like if you've ever been in a hurricane. So we know that hurricanes can move and damage and move anything out of their way. And ladies and gentlemen and brothers and sisters, I'm here to let you know that life circumstances can and will happen suddenly. There's no rhyme or reason for it. It just happens. You can lose your job suddenly. You can lose a loved one suddenly. Your health can be compromised suddenly. And it doesn't matter whether you're saved or not. It doesn't matter your color. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter your creed. Uh, that things can happen suddenly. And we are in a situation now where uh, with this uh, pandemic, and it seems like it just happened suddenly, and people don't know how to respond or how to act. And uh, the only thing that we can say is to have social distancing and, and uh, you know, washing your hands and those type of things. And you know that you're in a situation when the only thing that they can tell you to do is to stay away from people. Uh, the only thing that you can do is to wash your hands and do all of the other things that uh, we're being taught to do. Uh, and for some people, it just happened suddenly that, you know, they just woke up. And there are some people that didn't even have symptoms, uh, just like life. And the corona, obviously, is not the only situation that we are dealing with. We have other things and we have other circumstances that people have to deal with. But it just seems like this is the biggest thing that we're dealing with right now. Uh, and for a lot of people, it happened suddenly. Why don't you look at somebody and say, it happened suddenly. Now, in the Bible, it says, don't think it's strange when strange things happen, 1 Peter 4.12 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in so much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. As believers, when situations happen to us, uh, we have the ability to rejoice. Why? Because we have the Lord Jesus Christ living on the inside. And if he has peace, that means we can experience peace as well. And in life, we're going to go through things and we're going to have things. We're going to be challenged. Our faith is going to be challenged. But what we have to realize is that when we know God, we are able to have peace in the midst of a storm. That we're able to have peace in the midst of chaos. People may not understand how can you have peace when everything is coming up against you and everything is going all, all haywire around you. And yes, we are experiencing it. Yes, we are suffering. But we can have peace in the middle of chaos, not because of how good we are or who we are, but who we belong to. And when we know Jesus, you can know peace. God never said that he would not allow storms in our life. But he promised that they would not defeat us. And that's a great thing, and that's a great promise to know that, yes, storms will come in my life. Yes, trouble will come into my life. Yes, my faith will be tested. Yes, I will go through some things that I've never experienced before. And I may have some times where I don't feel like God is really with me. But at the end of the day, I have to wake up and realize that because I know God, I can know peace even in the midst of a situation. Point two, storms or chaos reveal our helplessness, our fear, helplessness, weakness. That's a terrifying discovery. Man is not able to handle situations. And that's something that we just don't know how to deal with. We don't know how to deal with things when we are not able to handle it. We're so used to being able to come up with strategies and come up with things to get us out of situations. But my brothers and sisters, I'm here to let you know that there are going to be some challenges and some things and some storms and some chaos that's going to hit your life that you will not be able to handle. When we look at our text, we understand that the disciples were seasoned and self-confident fishermen. They were unable to handle this particular storm. You have to understand that they were seasoned. That means that they were used to going out and being in storms. They were used to going out and handling situations. And many things, just like us a lot of times, we have gone through situations, but we are confident in our own 
selves that we are able to get our own selves out of situations. But there will come some times where you will not be able to get yourself out of a certain situation and our disciples in our text find themselves in this situation. Can you imagine being seasoned? Can you imagine saying that I've been through storms before? I can handle it. And many of us are doing that even in this situation. We feel that we can handle it. We feel that we have the know-how to get us out of this situation. But there will come some times, just like our text, where there's a storm that will enter your life that the only person that's going to be able to get you out of it is the Lord Jesus Christ. So you got to understand, yes, you may be able to do some things. Yes, you may have been able to handle some things. But sometimes God will allow some things to come in your life where the storm will go beyond your ability, where the storm will go beyond what you're able to handle. And it's going to bring you to a point where you have to recognize and say, God, I cannot handle this on my own. I cannot do this by myself. I tried it to do it before. I tried to do it and I failed. And now, God, I have to realize that you are the only one that's able to get me out of this situation. The disciples were used to storms. The only difference between this storm and that storm is that the other storms, they were able to navigate in their own strength. Just like many of us, we feel that I can handle it. I can do it myself. I can figure it out. And you may have been successful in the past. But again, there will come some things in your life that you will not be able to handle. And the tricky thing is that you try to handle it with the same mindset that got you in the situation in the same place. And I'm here to let you know that sometimes if you're trying to handle a situation with the same mindset, you're going to end up with the same results. And just like the disciples, they felt like, I can handle it. They are prideful because they handled storms before. And many times, many of us are saying, I can handle it because I've handled chaos before. I've handled storms before. But for some reason, this particular storm, I cannot handle. They came face to face with a storm that was so severe that they were not able to save themselves. They faced a storm that was so terrifying that they had to go wake the master and say, Master, do you even care that we're about to perish? They recognized, we have tried it. Jesus, we have tried to work this storm in our own strength. But this storm is greater than our ability. This storm is beyond our control. And we now recognize that we cannot save ourselves. Glory. They were frightened and terrified. They were completely helpless and hopeless, left to themselves. When the terrifying storm hits us, sometimes it leaves us fearful, helpless, and hopeless. They apparently tried to handle the storms without Jesus, and then when the situation got out of control, then they decide to go and wake Jesus. And unfortunately, many of us will do the same thing. We will wait until the situation is out of control before we will acknowledge Christ. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to implore for you, don't wait until the situation is beyond your control. Acknowledge Christ in the beginning and it will never get out of control. And so, they recognize we need Jesus. Now, what's interesting here is that Jesus, who was on the boat, was able to go to sleep. It's interesting that Jesus was facing the same thing that his disciples were facing. Except that he went to sleep. He was in the ship on a pillow Sleep. And the disciples are trying to figure out how in the world can you be sleep with all this noise going on? How can you be sleep when the waves have gotten to the point that they're starting to fill the boat? How can you be sleep when, as in Luke says, that they were in jeopardy? That means that the storms came up so great 
jeopardy. And yet, Jesus is still asleep. How, Jesus, can you be asleep in the midst of this situation? Jesus can be asleep because he already told them in the beginning, let us go to the other side. And because he said, let us go to the other side, his word went forth and created the destination. And because his word created the destination, it had to happen. And so because he spoke the word once, let us go to the other side, he went to sleep. And he was hoping that the disciples who had been with him would understand, if I say that we're going to go to the other side, then we are going to make it to the other side. He did not mention a storm was coming because the storm was irrelevant. The storm was not going to stop them from going to the other side. And I'm here to let you know just because you're going through a storm, if God said he's going to get you to the other side, it does not matter what you come up against. It does not matter what storm or chaos comes up against you. If God said I'm going to get you to the other side, then my brother and my sister, you are going to make it to the other side. It doesn't matter if a hurricane come up against you. It doesn't matter if sickness come up against you. It doesn't matter of any death or any situation that comes up against you. If God has a word over your life, that word is going to perform what that word says in your life. Another thing that this storm showed was their lack of faith. And the challenging question is that the disciples were going through two human experiences, but they were only aware of one, the experience of a terrible fear. What they failed to realize or to see is what was completely hidden from them. Yes, they were experiencing the storm, but that was not the root of their fear. Jesus said that the root of their fear was their faith. And he said, how can you say that when the waves and the waters were filling the boat? It did not matter because of what Jesus said. And so they began to fear more of what they saw than what they heard. See, if they would have just reflected back on what they heard, they would not have been affected by what they seen. And that's why many of us are in the trouble that we're in because we're spending too much time focusing on what we see and not what we hear. See, when you can spend time with God, even when the storms of life come up against you, you're still able to have a peace that passes all understanding. Why, you may not even be able to explain that peace, but all you know is that if God said that I can make it, I don't know how. I'm not sure when he's going to come to deliver me, but I know that God will deliver me because God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. And what Jesus was trying to show them is that I'm not, I'm not insensitive to your situation because I'm on board. And I want to encourage you this morning that God is not insensitive to your situation, but we want you to what did I say? Because what I say is different than what you see. And what I'm trying to get you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, is to stop worrying about what you see and start tuning into what did I hear? Because when I know what I heard, it will affect what I see. Because even if I see chaos, I can still say peace. I can only say peace if Jesus says peace. And when I know that he says peace, then even when storms come up against me, I know that I can handle it. Jesus said in Mark 9, 23, Jesus says unto them, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Psalms 27, 1 says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Matthew 28 and 20 says, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Hebrews 13 and 5 says, He said, He has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. 
See, my brothers and sisters, you have to rehearse the word of God in your life when you're going through storms. Because, yes, there will become some things suddenly and things that will come in your life that will shake your very faith. And, yes, we are human. And, yes, we're going to, uh, you know, we're going to not believe some things. And we're going to get scared. And we're going to get discouraged. And we're going to be despondent. Uh, but the word of God comes to encourage us in the midst of the storm. And I have to also let you know that sometimes God may not come and calm every storm in your life, but God will come and be with you in every storm in your life. And I'm here to let you know if he is with you, then you and God can make it through any storm that comes in your life. But it has to be faith. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11 and 6. And my last point, storms and chaos reveal the power of God. And you may say, what was the purpose of this experience? Why was the storm allowed to arise on the sea with Jesus on the boat? And the answer is given to us in 41. And what a marvelous purpose it was. It was to stir people to ask the question, what manner of man is this? Because Jesus has come to prove that he is the Messiah. And because you know, when you would go and heal, they would say, okay, that's, that, that, that's okay. That's definitely okay. You heal the sick and you heal the blind. And all that, that's good. That's good. But it's another thing to be in a boat and you have nature coming up against you. Because now that's something you can see and you can feel for yourself. See, a lot of times when something happens for somebody else, because you're not connected, you don't necessarily feel what the other person feels. You don't feel their deliverance. But when you go through a situation where you can not only see it, but you can feel it, and when Jesus brings you out of it, that's another type of miracle. And I believe that sometimes God is letting the things that's happening in your life to show you that he is God. He wants to give you another experience with him to let you know that it does not matter what comes up against you, that if I am for you, I am more than the whole world against you. And if God says he's going to bring you out of it, my brothers and sisters, you walk in that promise and go through whatever you have to go through, knowing that Jesus is with you. And while he's on board, he has the power to come storm that shows up in your life. Coming the storm will show them three things. One, it will demonstrate who he is. That he is the sovereign God. He is the Lord that has all power, even power over nature. The next thing is that he will strengthen the belief of his followers. Uh, because they will see that, wow, if he can calm the sea, uh, then it doesn't matter what I come up against. Uh, because all I do is just wake Jesus up uh, and all he has to say is couple words. Uh, peace, be still uh, and everything that's coming up against you will have to bow down to the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and the next point that he gives us uh, is that his care for generations uh, so Jesus did it not just for his disciples at that time uh, but he did it so he could show you and I uh, that no matter what you and I go through uh, he is on board with you. Uh, he is not going to allow you to drown. Uh, he is not going to allow you to go under. Uh, because all he has to do uh, is stand up and speak a word. Uh, isn't it interesting that while the disciples were going through what they were going through, uh, and while the waves were beating up against the ship, uh, that Jesus was asleep. Uh, but the minute his disciples came and said, Master, uh, that he woke up. And I'm here to let you know, ladies and all you have to do is just say his name. And in the midst of your trial, and in the midst of your situation, he'll get up. And what did he do? When he got up, he said, peace be still. And I like the way that sounds, peace be still. Because in the Greek, that means to muzzle. Because the waves were so loud, and they were so rambunctious, that Jesus said, peace. And they muzzled them. That means that they had to shut up. Whether it's family issue, whatever crisis you are dealing 
with them. I'm here to let you know that you can find peace in the midst of your pain. You don't have to commit suicide. You don't have to pull your hair out. All you should be able to do is get on your knees and acknowledge, God, I'm helpless. God, I can't do this without you. God, I need your help. And I'm here to let you know that Jesus will speak in your situation. And when he speaks in your situation, everything that's going against you has to bow down to the authority of our Lord. And why is that? It's because he is king of kings and he is Lord of lords. There's nobody beside him. There's nobody that has greater power than him. There's nothing in heaven or earth that has more power than our God. So whatever comes up against you, whatever is coming up against you, I'm here to let you know that you're able to get through it. I'm here to let you know that you can lay down your head at night and you can have peace. Why? Because Jesus is on board. If you know Jesus as your personal Savior, you're able to lay your head down and say, I thank God I know him because I can have peace. And I don't know, grab somebody and say, I can have peace in the midst of this storm. Because I'm here to let you know he will do it. Look at somebody and say, he'll do it for me. He's going to do it for me. And I'm excited about that. That's why I can have peace. That's why I can tell God, thank you. That's why I got to lift up my hands when I have tears in my eyes. Because I know sooner or later, the thing that's coming up against me has to bow down to the authority of my Lord. And when he is all said and done, I'm here to let you know that he'll get glory. And that's why he's allowing the storm to happen in your life. So that he can get glory out of your life. So he can let you know that I'm still God. And yes, I'm still on the throne. I still have all power in my hands. God is able to do what he said he can do. My brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter what storm comes. You can put a name on it. You can put a name that says, it's this type of storm. And it may be something you've never experienced before. It may be something that you have never dealt with. I'm here to let you know, just because you have not dealt with it, does not mean it's beyond the power of our God. God is speaking. The only question is, is are you listening? God is challenging you. Are you up for the challenge? Can I pray for you? Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word. We thank you, God, that we can have peace in the middle of chaos. That we can have a calm in the middle of chaos. That while everything is loud around us, we're able to have peace. And the only reason why we're able to have peace is because you are on board. And if you've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we invite you this morning to accept him. Because the only way that you can have someone to say, peace be still to all the storms in your life, is that, that he's actually the Lord and Savior of your life. If you've not accepted Christ as your personal Savior, then I invite you to share this prayer. Say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that God sent you to this earth, that you live, but you died. And the reason why you died is because you died for my sins. You died because I was insufficient to do it by myself. And I accept what you've done. I accept the gift that you were given in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that he died for my sins. But I believe that on the third day he rose with all power in his hand and he now sits at the right hand of the Father. And so, Lord Jesus, I am entrusting my life to you. And asking you to come into my life and take over. Cleanse me with your blood. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
And we want to thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you so much. And God bless. Hello, this is me again. I certainly hope that you were blessed by the word of God. I pray that you were encouraged and uplifted knowing that with Jesus on board, you can find peace in the middle of your chaos. I hope that you'll continue to uh, stay with us and connect with us on our several social media outlets on Facebook, on EBC, Wilmington, on our YouTube channel at Ebenezer Baptist Church, Wilmington, Delaware, or go to our website, which is www.ebcwilmington.org. There's a contact form where we hope that you would just uh, go on and uh, you know give us your email, your contact information, uh, so that we can stay in contact with you and you in contact with us, that you know what's going on here with the ministry and keep up with how the Lord is continually to uh, bless us. If you haven't done so already, we hope that you will leave a comment and let us know how the Word of God and how this ministry is blessing you and encouraging you. It certainly would mean a lot to us as we continue to go forward in the work that the Lord has called us to. But I don't want you to go anywhere because we have a special surprise. Stay tuned. Pastor Ham and First Lady Ham, on behalf of the Deacons Board of Deacons, we'd like to wish you a happy 15th anniversary. We pray that you continue to preach and teach in season and out of season. To Pastor Gilbert S. Ham Sr. and First Lady Viola Ham, on behalf of the Deaconess and the Willow Workers Ministries, we salute you today on your 15th anniversary celebration. We thank you for being our servants. We thank you for the tenure that you've given to the Ebenezer Baptist Church these past 15 years. And we pray that Lord continue to bless and keep you in his care. God bless. Hello to Pastor and Mrs. Ham. On the behalf of the Senior Usher Board of Ebenezer Baptist Church, we would like to wish you a happy 15th pastoral anniversary. Your ushers love you. I blow you kisses and a big old hug from the Senior Usher Board of Ebenezer Baptist Church. We love you both. God bless. Hi, Pastor Ham. Hi, Sister Ham. This is Sister Juanita Slaughter, president of the Flower Ministry. And uh, can you believe I'm doing this video? I can't believe it myself, but I just hope it doesn't get cut off. Um, on behalf of the Flower Ministry members, we just want to congratulate you on your pastoral anniversary today. Uh, we just want to let you know that we care, we miss you, and we love you, and um, we didn't plan to be a part, you know, but that's how it is right now, so they say we are a part today, so we can be together all the tomorrows. So, um, again, congratulations on the 15 years, wow, amen, it's been 15 years, so we just want to congratulate you, um, you and Sister Ham. Uh, Pastor Ham, thank you for being such a wonderful pastor to us at Ebenezer. And Sister Ham, thank you for being such a wonderful First Lady. And stay as sweet as you always are, my dear. And um, I, I miss you both so much. I miss my whole Ebenezer Baptist Church family, as a matter of fact. But, uh, and, my, and my own family, you know, because we are part a little bit too right now. But um, we want you to enjoy your day. Have some cake and ice cream. I wish I was there to have some with you. <laughs> but um, we just want to know that we miss you. We love you. Um, I pray that we be together again real soon. So so God bless. Take care. Follow the CDC guidelines. And um, take care. God bless you. We love you. To God be the glory. Bye. Amen. 
Good morning to our Ebenezer Baptist Church family and to our pastor and first lady, Reverend Gilbert S. Ham Sr. and Mrs. Viola Ham. On behalf of the Johnson Inspirational Chorus, we would like to wish you a very happy and blessed 15th pastoral anniversary. We want you to know that we love you and we miss you and we cannot wait to get back together again. God bless you and continue to be safe. Happy anniversary, Pastor and Mrs. Ham. This is your day. On behalf of the Mass Choir and the Sanctuary Choir, we are sending blessings to you. Pastor Ham, you are a great preacher. You're a great teacher. You are a great leader and a counselor for all those that are in need. Pastor Ham, we want you to know how much we love and appreciate you. Mrs. Ham, we love you. You are a great first lady. We're sending all of our love and blessings to you as well. So let me say once again, Happy anniversary, Pastor and Mrs. Ham. To Pastor Ham and Mrs. Ham, we'd like to wish you a happy 15th anniversary on behalf of the Sunday School Ministry. We'd like to say thank you for your dedication and leadership that you have shown to us and the guidance that you have given. Again, we say happy anniversary and we love you.